Thank you, Provost Liss. And thank you to all the faculty, staff, and the parents that are currently watching. And most importantly, congratulations to the class of 2021. I am deeply saddened that I'm not able to share this moment with you all in person. But regardless, this is a very special and exciting day for all of us. I want you all to be proud of the accomplishments that you have achieved and the milestones that you have reached to get this far. This year is unlike anything we've experienced. So if you got through the COVID-19 pandemic, you can get through anything. And my deep condolences go to everyone that has lost a family member, a friend, or a loved one during these times. I'm not going to say this is the beginning because I believe that your journey has already begun and this moment is just a fragment of that journey. But I will say this, as you continue this journey, you will experience hardships, failures, exhaustion. You will feel like giving up. But remember, no great success was ever achieved without failure. So embrace your failure, learn from your hardships, be courageous, resilient, and recognize your potential. I stand before you today with great respect and admiration to all CCNY and CUNY students. And as a woman and a person of color, and the student government president of the first free public institution of higher education in the US, I am extremely proud of this diverse institution and its students. I would not be the woman I am today without the amazing and exceptional woman in my life that I call my mother, or without my backbone and support system that I call my father, or without my beautiful and caring role model that I call my sister. And finally, I would not be here without the woman I will always love unconditionally, my grandmother. May her soul forever rest in peace. Lastly, I want to thank my wonderful student government colleagues for being extraordinary student leaders during these challenging times. I also want to thank President Boudreau, Dr. Tony Liss, Professor David Girizalmi, the members of the Faculty Senate, Vice President Celia Lloyd, the Dean of the Colin Powell School, Dean Rich, Dr. Sarah Moyer, and all the faculty and staff that have made this an exceptional experience. It has been an honor and a pleasure to have served you and to have represented your voices. So thank you. And again, congratulations to the class of 2021. Thank you, Provost Liz, President Boudreau, and CCNY faculty, family, friends, and fellow advisors. Well, we've made it. We braved the belly of the beast, and while inside, even with this six feet of social distance between us, we've managed to find our hearts, our strength, ourselves, and most importantly, each other. We, the class of 2021, have remained resilient even at our most vulnerable and obstinate in our pursuit of peace and progress. CCNY's motto tells us rest BK, ads BK, pros BK. Look back, look at, and look ahead. Now, standing here at a precipice of a world's worth of open doors, we must look back. We must thank those individuals who along our way have led us to this moment and left the doors open. First, we have to thank our families and caregivers for their unconditional love and support. We thank you for the times you've pushed us to transcend our comfort zones and question convention. We also thank you for being our watchtower in case we ever stray too far. Mom, Dad, Rachel, we may butt heads more often than we want to. But even when we don't see eye to eye, we understand each other, heart to heart. It is at these moments that I'm reminded of the frankly groundbreaking 2009 song, You'll Always Find Your Way Back Home. And yes, this is from Hannah Montana, the movie. No, I am not ashamed. And yes, this will be replaying in the back of my mind 
as I finish this speech. We must also thank our educators, from our primary school teachers to our professors, our adjuncts, and our advisors. We thank you for being our harbors, hearkening us gently back to shore and sending us forth full steam ahead with newfound purpose. I must give a special thank you to Dr. Lewis for the hours long conversation spent in your office that I will never forget. Professor Higney and Professor Gustafson, thank you for the constant support and belief. Professor Ratner, thank you for inspiring me to reach high expectations and set even higher goals as I chart my own path into New York City's classrooms. Finally, we thank each other. We thank the friends who stayed up with us during interminable caffeine-charged all-nighters. Eric, I'm talking to you. The friends who joined us as we explored the city in terms of cheap thrills and even cheaper eats. Rebecca, that one's for you. And finally, the friends who in a campus of over 15,000 and a city of over 8 million people have helped us to find our place and were always by our side. My fellow teachers of tomorrow, thank you. This speech is for all of you who have been told at one point or another that you don't belong, that you don't deserve all this, that college just isn't for you. It's for those of you who never took no for an answer, who when they looked at you like you were invisible, you told them they were missing a syllable. If you take nothing else from this speech, let it be this. Not only do you belong, you are indivisible. For me, graduation has always been a distant dream, one only seen in pictures too far away to reach. The truth is I'm still learning to rewire the places in my brain that still fire like a five alarm fire at this question of belonging because I'm so conditioned to think myself a stranger to the world. I was content peering over pillars and gawking on at pedestals of what the world deemed normal or typical. On my side of this divide, the autism stigma, domineering in her ways, funnels us into one of two categories, stigmata or statistic. It wasn't too long ago in middle school that I shrouded myself in a thick, sandpapery red curtains of the auditorium that always collected my cries. On the topic of my disability, I found myself ensnared in the silence like a curtain call at the end of a performance. Between these seams of stigmata or statistic, I thought myself the former. I was convinced that no college would ever accept someone like me. In high school, on this very same stage, I proclaim myself the latter, one of the roughly 65% of students with disabilities who graduate high school. I posed as the success story, someone who overcame autism, not realizing that I was still groveling at the feet of this stigma, like a poster boy who had never given permission to print. Where I only used to see no entry signs, I now see doors waiting to be opened. I found the keys nestled in the nooks of the knack's cramped corridors, caught in conversation with friends, and deep in the recesses of South Campus, lying inconspicuous between book pages. Now standing here at the precipice, both proud and humbled, to be representing the class of 2021, looking out at the open doors that await all of us when we collectively turn our tassels to the left and take that decisive first step. I can say with certitude that I, that we are not strangers to the world, that the world was just a stranger to us. I remember the Bronx bound D train was crowded as usual, pulling through the 145th street station. So I slung my messenger bag around my shoulders. I wrapped one fist tightly around the pole and I braced myself for sudden stops and jerks. 
among a horde of faces unnamed and stories untold, I felt this almost sublime isolation. The faster the train moved, the slower the world seemed to, as this question of belonging reverberated around in my mind. I finger painted a map of the world and fell into the checkerboard of colors, so polychromatic. Countries clung together but could never find the right combination. Fingertips found each other shrouded in the mist of a cultural lost and found. Traces of lost colonies wrapped blurred lines around the circumference of this globe, my mind. College isn't about the answers received, but the questions asked. It's not only what you learn about the classics or the classroom, but the things you learn about yourselves along the way. It's about the friends that won't walk your road with you, but you know will never be too far. As graduates and soon to be alumni, we remember City College as the beacon, the contact zone, where these roads can and do meet, and the more than 100 countries and 150 languages that call our campus home don't clash, but coexist. However, it has become clear that now we must do more than simply coexist. We must come together. We must commit to progress over complacency. And as the late John Lewis said at this very same stage, not more than two years ago, we make good trouble. It is up to us to continue his legacy, always remembering to make our own. Congratulations, class. 2021. Thank you, Provost Liss, President Boudreaux, and CCNY faculty. A special thanks to my mentor, Mamita Rahman, Professor Muir, Professor Light, my parents and siblings, Chechi and Jadai, and of course, fellow graduates of the class of 2021. When I sat down to write this speech, I did not know how to summarize our collective experience here at CCNY. I thought to myself, how can I find the commonality in the most diverse student body in the nation? Yet I realized that there was something powerful in each and every student that I met in my four years at this great institution, our resiliency. Any day here at CCNY, in any classroom, you may find a student who has faced housing insecurity. There may be a student who is working two or three jobs just to earn the seat that they are sitting in. There may be another student who must run home after class to care for their child. On a normal day here at CCNY, many of us are on a constant uphill battle to earn our education. And then COVID-19 hit. And the pursuit for an education, which already seemed difficult, looked almost impossible. I personally felt that way. Both of my parents were hospitalized with COVID-19 during my junior year. This was the year that I was supposed to ace the LSAT and start looking at law schools. Instead, I was saying happy birthday to my father over FaceTime as he laid intubated and unconscious in a hospital bed. He stayed like that for three months. I had no clue if he would make it, how my siblings and I would pay the bills for without his income, or frankly, what the next day or more over the next hour would hold for me and my family. I'm not sharing this story to garner sympathy or to dampen this celebration, but rather to shed light on the spirit of my fellow classmates. In those months, I did not want to sign into Zoom class or take the LSAT or post on Blackboard. All of this seemed both minuscule and demanding. However, my classmates' resiliency is what inspired me to push forward. I logged into class one day and one of my peers shared that she had lost her home in the week prior because her mother lost her job due to the economic impacts of the COVID, of the pandemic. Another shared that she had been stuck in the country and unable to see her family for weeks because of the travel restrictions. Over the pandemic, 
students kept sharing their stories of strength, determination, and commitment to their education, despite their difficult circumstances. And I realized what resilient scholars we are here at CCNY. Each and every single one of us who are graduating can say that we have truly and sincerely fought for our education. We have faced systemic barriers before we even reach the steps of CCNY, and we have pushed back against the most daunting of obstacles of the pandemic while here. We have earned our right to be proud and to join the ranks of the accomplished CCNY alumni. So what now? As you graduate, it seems like things are slowly starting to get better regarding the pandemic. Small public gatherings are being allowed, travel restrictions are being lifted, and vaccines are becoming more accessible. But at the same time, we must remember that many things remain unchanged for people in our nation. Black people are still being targeted and facing higher rates of violence by the police and other institutional forces. Asian and Latin immigrants, along with other ethnic groups, are still facing high levels of discriminatory violence. Children still remain in cages along our borders as mass shootings continue within our borders. We are graduating at a time when a lot of problems still remain in our nation. But fortunately, the degree that we have earned here at CCNY is not just one in the arts or sciences, but it is one in inclusion, equity, nonviolence, and compassion. It is one that has shaped us into individuals who do not sit idly for the world to accommodate us and our loved ones, but one that has transformed us into architects of the social future, who will go on to build a better community, nation, and world. It is part of what will make you unique from all other applicants as you apply for jobs and pursue further education. Because when people see CCNY on your resume and LinkedIn, they see a candidate who is proficient in succeeding in even the most impossible of circumstances. CCNY class of 2021, it is truly my honor to graduate alongside you today because I know the student that sat to my left and to my right in every class, the one that passed me on the way to NAC, and the one I saw walking to the 137th Street subway station are all going to, in both small and big ways, change this world. Congratulations, graduates.